I used to think it wasn't worth it to learn how to code until I realized that there are pieces of code out there that make more money per minute than I ever will in my lifetime. In fact, I can bet you that in the time you took to brush your teeth this morning, somewhere out there, some piece of code triggered a program to sell a few stock options and make some unknown Wall Street investment firm a couple million USD in profit. The truth is, if you know how to code, you can run laps around everyone else that doesn't, and if you learn how to use AI to help you, you can run even faster laps. But one thing is for sure, you actually have to sit down and learn how to code. Luckily, I'm going to save you from having to sift through all the overcomplicated advice on the internet written by first year computer science students who took one intro to CS course and then went on to buy this MacBook, this hoodie, these headphones, these laptop stickers, this coffee mug, and this iPhone to take late night pictures of their VS Code setup. Of course, with only one line inside the actual code editor. Step 1. Instead of listening to them, just start because it's a well-known fact that 100% of successful programmers have at some point started. Crazy, isn't it? If you have no money to start out and you want to learn slowly by yourself over a long period of time, I recommend this free website called roadmap.sh. It's the first thing that comes up when you Google coding roadmap. For pretty much every technology role you can think of, like front-end, back-end, full-stack, cybersecurity, and for pretty much every niche skill like system design, API design, and AWS, you get a solid roadmap which you can use to at least start learning. But if you're more of a structured learner who learns better with a solid curriculum, assignments, and support, you could get a degree or you could jump into a bootcamp. Nowadays, a lot of companies don't really care if you have a degree as long as you're good at building stuff and you have experience. And by the way, if you want a more affordable and reliable path to a high paying, flexible tech job that doesn't take up 4 years of your life and a huge student loan, you would especially benefit from this video's sponsor, Triple Ten. Triple Ten helps literally anyone, even complete beginners, gain all the necessary skills to get placed into a high paying tech job. You can pick from software engineering, data science, cybersecurity, and a bunch more. But the reason why I recommend them is because they give you externship opportunities. They give you project experience, tutors, coaches, code reviews, and career help. Stuff that the average self-taught learner doesn't have access to. And I'm not saying the job market is bad, but this is what the average computer science student looks like nowadays after graduating once they realize that 14 minutes of studying per week probably wasn't enough. So when I see that 87% of triple 10 grads get hired within 6 months of completion, that's enough to convince me that something is working here. You can get a tech education and actually have a job to show for it. You can do the whole thing online, remotely, on your own time, even if you have a busy schedule. And on top of that, they guarantee that if you won't find a job within 10 months of finishing the course, you'll get 100% of your money back. Plus, if you use the code EASY, you'll get 30% off on all of their courses and can save up to $3400 on your education. So don't hesitate to click the link in the description or scan the QR code for a free career consultation. But anyway, let's go back to looking at the self-taught roadmap. Whatever you do, do not obsess over mastering a programming language. Programming languages are pretty easy to learn, and once you know one language, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to learn other ones. Some are strongly typed, meaning you have to bench press at least 200 pounds to use them. Other languages are weakly typed, like JavaScript, because weak people use it. Sometimes the syntax is different. Some languages have faster performance in certain use cases. Some languages are easier for beginners. Some languages are used by only one company and meant to be run on a specific type of machine. Some languages shouldn't exist. Some languages are low level, meaning they're harder for humans to understand, but easier for machines to read. And other languages are high level, meaning they're easy for humans to understand, but they give you a little bit less control over the actual machine. But yeah, just, just learn Python. You'll notice that the roadmaps they give you are pretty long and pretty detailed. But I'm gonna be honest. No actual developer needs to have deep knowledge about all of these topics, and you shouldn't try to do everything on the roadmap. That's like trying to learn how to make grilled cheese by reading a book on bread and a separate book on cheese. At some point, it's just faster to make the thing and see what happens. Experience is what you need, but the nice thing about this website is that it always gives you somewhere to start. No nonsense, no fluff, no filler, no watching thousands of videos called if I wanted to be a software engineer in 2079, here's what I would know. All you need to do is start on the roadmap, learn some of the stuff in the yellow boxes, maybe take a course or two and read a couple articles and watch a couple videos and then immediately move on to step two, make stuff. Think to yourself, how can I use what I just learned 
to make something that I actually want to make. For example, if you're a beginner in web development and you really like pressure washing driveways, then guess what? You can make a website where a user can input how big their driveway is, the surface type, and where they live, and it'll estimate how much they would have to pay to get it pressure washed. It sounds simple, but I guarantee you it'll be way more complicated than you expect. You'll have to look up pretty much everything, and you will 100% be tempted to give up halfway through when your eyes are getting dry, your posture is deteriorating into freeform shapes, and the backs of your thighs are sticking to your chair. But ask anyone who's actually gotten good at coding, and they'll tell you. Once you can get that first project done, you have now ascended from what's known as tutorial hell into the far superior project heaven, which is where all the accomplished developers live and breathe. Just look at neil.fun. This collection of little mini games was made by a college student practicing coding, and if you look at the first couple of websites he made many years ago, they're pretty basic, something a beginner can make in a few days. But when you look at the newer ones, it's pretty easy to tell that his coding skills got a little bit more advanced. And you can do the exact same thing as long as you put in the time and don't give up, even when business school starts to look real tempting. One big reason you might feel disappointed in yourself when you first start learning to code is because everyone else seems to know way more than you, and they talk about concepts you don't even know exist as if they're common sense. Sometimes you'll hear your favorite coding YouTubers talking about API calls and weird systems and acronyms and niche technologies and protocols that just make no sense because none of those things show up in an 8 hour Python for Beginners YouTube tutorial. And although it may seem like some people were born knowing how to set up servers and backend databases and web sockets and how to create bots out of thin air, it's really just a gradual learning process that takes a long time. You probably won't learn this stuff in school, you probably won't see it in textbooks, and it probably won't get recommended on your YouTube homepage. But you will learn it through projects and googling and reading people's code and copying and pasting other people's code until you've created a fully functional final product. You won't become a programming expert slogging through 11 hour YouTube tutorials back to back to back. At the same time, one big issue is that everyone tells you to just build projects you're passionate about. But what if you're not passionate about anything? What if you're just coding to pay the bills and your only hobby is watching YouTube? Luckily, there is an easy solution. Hover over the top left menu of this website and click on projects. Based on whatever language you know or whatever skill you're trying to practice, they have actual, useful projects that you can test your skills with. And the best part is that they give you general guidelines on what to make how to put your project on GitHub, and where to find help. But unlike most places, they don't just give you the solution. Unlike a YouTube tutorial where you're just watching someone build a project and then copying down every single line of code one by one, this forces you to actually learn. And if you can't find a good project on this website, don't overthink it. Just start. Just do Google search and pick whatever sounds the most fun. By now, you may be thinking, if tutorial hell is step one and project-based heaven is step two, then what's step three? Lead Code Limbo. If you don't know, Lead Code is a website where you can practice staring at a computer screen with a coding problem and not understanding anything for weeks in a row. Unless you're applying to a company where you're the firstborn child of the CEO, you're going to have to accept that Lead Code is law. When you're applying to a top tech company, being good at solving Lead Code problems is like a secret handshake between you and your interviewer. There's a secret handshake that exists in all companies. They want you to be able to jump through a set of hoops to show that you are good enough to be there. And so we don't have like a really good way to gauge how good someone actually is at coding in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 50 minutes. So instead it's like, hey, you come in here, I'm gonna do that secret handshake, you better have done 300 leak code problems, you've done 300 leak code problems, you walk in, you know how to use arrays, map sets, uh, you understand trees. We just know that you can do all the things. Now is it the best way to test people? Probably not. There's no best way to grind leak code. You can find many roadmaps for leak code online, and ideally, you would space it out over at least a few months instead of trying to do 75 problems in a week. But the important thing is, you just have to do it. It might be intimidating to see people on YouTube coding up solutions to lead code hards before you've even finished reading the problem. But it's important to know that everyone once started by solving two sum in O of n squared. And if all else fails, you can just tell yourself McDonald's is the new meta. Anyway, if that helped, I'm collecting donations in the form of subscribes to fund the next video.